Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Grace and this video is going to be the first of many, hopefully, videos that are going to be all about my pregnancy, my specific twin pregnancy and motherhood and things like this. Um, my channel has kind of been sitting dormant for a while because I originally created this channel years and years ago to just kind of document my life and what was going on in it. And the last year or two, I just haven't, not that my life has been boring, but I haven't really known what I wanted this channel to be. And um, my life had some big changes in it. And so now I've had another big change in that I am now pregnant with twins, as I said, and I've been just soaking in as much information on YouTube and watching tons of videos from other pregnant mamas. Um, and I just feel like this might be the new direction that my channel is going into because I'm really excited about it, but it's strange and there's a lot that I didn't know. This is my first pregnancy. So here I am. This is the first of many, as I said, I have a big long list of videos that I'm gonna be making. So if you are interested in this, maybe you are pregnant, maybe you're pregnant with twins, maybe not, maybe you're just here, because that's cool. Um, but I would love if you'd consider subscribing um, and coming along with this journey. So let's go. So this video originally was just gonna be one video and I was just gonna do like a first trimester review. I am freshly out of my first trimester, but, then I wrote down all the information that I wanted to talk about and that would have been way too long. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about my symptoms in the first trimester of a twin pregnancy. And then the next video, part two, which will come out next week, is going to be like just kind of a catch all. My tips, things I wish I had known, things that really helped me, etc, etc, etc. So stay tuned for that. So let's just jump right into these symptoms. <sighs> Y'all, I feel like everything under the sun can be a pregnancy symptom. And I know that's because you have crazy hormones pumping in your body when you become pregnant. And so that can affect everything. But the thing that I kind of think about is like, do you remember when, um, at the beginning of 2020, when COVID really first started and everyone was trying to figure out like, what are the symptoms of COVID? And at least to me, it felt like everything under the sun could be a symptom for COVID. Like, oh, you have a sore toe, you might have COVID. And it was just like really scary time because everything could be a symptom. It's not really quite that that broad anymore, um, thankfully. But that's how I feel kind of with pregnancy symptoms. There are some weird symptoms. So don't count it out. If you're pregnant and you have something weird going on, it's probably those hormones. So here we go. I have a list of them. I'm going to try and get through them kind of quickly for you, but I have some stories with each of them. Um, so first off is heightened smell. Okay. So apparently this is a really, really common one, but I didn't know that was a pregnancy symptom. This was definitely the first symptom that I got. I did find out I was pregnant pretty early because my husband and I were trying and so I found out like basically at the very end of my third week of being pregnant because you are technically they count the first day of pregnancy is the first day of your last menstrual cycle so when I found out I was right at the end of three weeks I didn't have like really any symptoms all of that fourth week or that fifth week to the point where I was actually kind of getting a little nervous because I was like watching all these YouTube videos and reading blogs and people were talking about how they had symptoms immediately, which uh, that does happen for a lot of people um, because the instant you become pregnant, your body starts pumping these hormones. So some people get them instantly. I waited a couple weeks until I kind of started to get the symptoms, but then, oh man, <laughs> when they hit, they hit and they kind of all hit and they have never relented really. Um, so I should have just like basked in those two weeks then. But anyway, heightened smell maybe started like in that fifth week. <sighs> Y'all, you think like heightened smell, maybe that's a wonderful thing. Maybe I'll like smell the wildflowers outside or the bakery down the street. No, 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 <laughs> it's not that. It's like 
oh, you're nauseous and you're vomiting in a toilet, so now you can smell every square inch of that toilet. Or um, <laughs> like, oh, your husband is making that type of food that makes you nauseous. Well, you're gonna smell it in your house for the next three days. So it's those kind of things. It's not pleasant. Um, also kind of in relates to COVID, I, I did get COVID in 2020 along with many people. And thankfully I did not have a, a very bad reaction to it, but I did lose my smell and my taste. And I thought that was so awful, like so terrible to lose some of your senses. But you know what? I would take not being able to smell <laughs> over this. <laughs> During pregnancy, heightened smell. Oh my gosh, it is so awful. I hate it so much. Thankfully, it has kind of subsided to an extent now that I'm in my second trimester, but I still feel like I smell a lot of things. Um, but ugh, I did not enjoy that. And my one example <laughs> that was really bad. Um, so I'm a school teacher and so I was on summer break and my husband and I had already decided that we were gonna get a puppy this summer because I wanted to mother something so bad. And we already have a dog and a cat, but our dog was super lonely. And so we had already decided to get a puppy. So we get a puppy, <laughs> nine days later, we find out that we're pregnant. Um, didn't know it at the time though. Um, so <laughs> we get this puppy and I love this puppy so much. You'll, you will meet this puppy in, this, in subsequent videos, I'm sure. But my goodness, you guys, he smelled so badly to me at the beginning, so bad. And he wasn't dirty. Like my husband, because I was having all these issues with smell, he was like giving him baths all the time. So he wasn't dirty. It's just, there was something about the smell of this pup. And it was so sad because like, I just didn't get to, I wanted to snuggle him. I wanted to like build that relationship. And I just couldn't, I couldn't be around him. So like I had to keep my distance. It was so sad and so hard. And I feel like I'm gonna look back at his puppyhood and feel really bad because I just didn't get to really relish his puppydom. Um, it's gotten better, but I still, I still think he smells so bad. <laughs> so hopefully at some point I'll get over it because I don't have any issues with my other dog, but this puppy and this smell thing. Whew. Okay, let's move on. I have my list on my phone, which is why I keep looking down, by the way. Um, next one is a super, super common pregnancy symptom that I feel like pretty much every pregnant woman is going to experience at some point, and that's cramping. If you think about it, totally makes sense why you cramp. Like your uterus is growing at an exponential rate. And so organs and muscles and tendons, everything's moving and stretching in weird ways. So it makes sense that you're gonna cramp. It's a little bit scary because you do hear, and this is important to know, that if you have severe cramping, like really painful cramping, that can be a sign that, you know, something is not right and you need to go to the doctor. But minor cramping is very common. Um, I'm a lady who <laughs> experiences very severe menstrual cramps. Um, almost on the monthly. So for me, these like pregnancy cramps have been like nothing, <laughs> like a little inconvenient, but nothing compared to my normal cramps. Um, but it is a symptom. It's most likely something that you will or have already experienced. Next up, this one was shocking. I knew it would happen in pregnancy. Again, it makes total sense that it happens, but it happened so early and that's shortness of breath. So, you expect like third trimester, you're huge, your lungs are like all cramped and you're gonna have shortness of breath. That makes sense. But no, I had it from like week six, like crazy. Walking just like up the stairs, I would be huffing and puffing. And you guys, I'm in pretty decent shape. Like my husband and I are hikers, we're outdoorsy. We, we you know, I'm not like a gym rat, but I'm pretty healthy. So the fact, and even this, like talking this much, I'm trying to remain calm and cool, but in reality, I'm like, <sighs> so the shortness of breath was really shocking to me how quickly that started. And there must be a, a reason with the hormones. I don't know that reason because logically I still have a lot of space. I mean, I'm starting to get a bump at this point in the second trimester, but like, this was like week six, I was getting shortness of breath. So that was kind of a surprising one. 
how quickly that started. Next, this is the last of kind of the weird ones that I had and then I'm gonna go into the common ones that everybody has. <sighs> and that is sensitive teeth. So apparently this also is kind of a common one. Um, some women get like super sensitive gums that hurt and like when they floss, their gums bleed. And I have experienced that a little bit with flossing, but the gum thing hasn't been a huge thing for me, but sensitive teeth. And this one started really early and I didn't know that this was a pregnancy symptom. So early on, I told my husband, I was like, I need to go get like Sensodyne or something. Like my teeth are so sensitive, it's so weird. And then I read online that that's actually a fairly common pregnancy symptom. I don't know all the science behind that one either. And this symptom actually hasn't lasted. I don't really feel like my teeth are sensitive anymore. This lasted for like a good maybe six or seven weeks, but then it has subsided. Um, but that's just been a really weird one. That surprised me. And apparently, and I don't know if I'm gonna describe this perfectly well, I'm not a medical professional, if you can't tell, um, but apparently some women, the actual like makeup of their saliva changes during pregnancy and it can get like, <clears throat> I don't know exactly, like can get more sugar in your saliva. And then you get a whole bunch of cavities. And so I'm really, really hoping that this has not happened to me. I have not been to the dentist since I've gotten pregnant, but it's not, it's like nothing, you can't help it. No matter how well you take care of your teeth, if your saliva has more sugar in it, you're naturally just gonna get cavities, which is awful. But I've heard like some women, pregnancy can like ruin their teeth. And that's so scary and oh, it's so frustrating because there's literally nothing you can do about it. All right, so here are my big ones. <laughs> that are very, very common in pregnancy, but I think are elevated if you're having multiples. That's at least what my doctor told me. So we found out we we're having twins at like eight weeks. And when my doctor came in, um, this is my first time even meeting him. And he was like, it was super, super nice and very excited for us. And his wife had just like the year before had twins. So it was cool because he can kind of look at it from both sides. Um, which is awesome, but he was like, I know you're excited, but I want to be honest with you <laughs> that twin pregnancy is really hard and all your symptoms hit twice as early and twice as hard. And again, I can't compare it to a singleton pregnancy because I've never had a singleton pregnancy, but these symptoms that I'm about to talk about have been so intense. So I figure it's more intense because of the twin. So if you're pregnant with twins, you might have my experience. Maybe you won't, maybe you'll have a breeze. I've heard some women like don't have any nausea with twins. You are so lucky. But if you're pregnant with singleton, maybe hopefully your symptoms won't be as severe as mine. First, let's talk exhaustion. Okay, for years and years, I have heard that pregnant women are tired. Okay, not saying that I didn't believe it, but I just, in that first trimester, you can't even tell they have a bump. You're like, what are you tired about? I, uh, you guys, how wrong I was. Oh my goodness. The exhaustion is so real and so strong. And it's so frustrating because you have like nothing to show for it or anything. So I mentioned earlier, I'm a school teacher and we found out we were pregnant like literally a couple days, or I became pregnant just a couple days after going on summer break. And so I've been really, really lucky because pretty much my entire first trimester was summer break. And so I got to rest. And I didn't find out I was pregnant with twins till eight weeks in. And up until then, I literally was thinking, am I just like a weak woman? Like, how is this so hard? <sighs> like I'm, I'm literally like getting to relax and lay around all summer. And I am so tired. How do women do this? Most women are still, you know, going to their jobs. And here I am, like, dead on the couch. <sighs> then I found out I was twins, and so that kind of justified it. But anyway, the best way I can kind of describe to you this level of exhaustion, I'm going to talk in, like, a hiking metaphor, because that's how my brain works. If you go on a hike one day and you push yourself past your normal limit, like, you hike to a higher elevation, 
or a longer destination than you ever have. And you can just tell like, oh my gosh, I really pushed it. That next day, you guys, you are so exhausted. Like everything hurts to move. Everything takes effort. Breathing is hard. Oh, it's just, it's a lot. And it takes you some time to recover. That's how I felt every single day, but I wasn't climbing any mountains. I was literally like laying on the couch playing Animal Crossing. Like <laughs> I was so tired. Walking up the stairs in my townhome was exhausting. I would have to sit down and catch my breath walking up the stairs. <sighs> the exhaustion is so real. And I think because you're you're trying to grow multiple babies, you probably do have a higher level of exhaustion would be my guess. Next one, <sighs> you guys, the emotional side of pregnancy. <sighs> I am not a very emotional person. I don't cry a whole lot. <sighs> That's just not really me. You guys, I cry all the time, all the time. Watching reels, show me a bunny, like I'm gone. Like, oh, the emotions are so real. Now that I'm in my second trimester, I'm able to manage it a little bit better, but I still have to have a good cry like every three days. Like if I haven't watched a sad dog video and cried, then I like need to, like I need to go find something to make me cry just to get it all out. And that is not me at all. And my example of this, which is so stupid, so we live in Idaho and my husband is finishing up college. He was in the military and took a break and blah, 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 blah. So he's finally finishing college. And he is like a geology, geoscience kind of a major. And so this past summer, when I was on summer break, he had this internship job and he was so excited about it because it was like geology based and he was gonna get to be out in the field and learning all these things hands-on that he's learned in school. And he was told even before he accepted the internship that there would be a few nights in the summer that he'd have to actually go camp. Like the, the team was going out to do observations and they were going to camp overnight. No problem with that. That sounds awesome. I was actually really jealous. That sounds so cool. Fast forward a few weeks. Now I'm pregnant, very pregnant. And he comes home one day and says, hey babe, remember about the overnights? Well, those are actually gonna happen next week and I'm gonna be gone for two nights. You guys, the emotional response that I had to that news is embarrassing. <laughs> I burst into tears. It was like he was going off to war for the next four years and he didn't care for me anymore and he didn't care for his unborn children and blah, 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 blah. And it was, I was a mess. And even while it was happening, logically, I was thinking, you're being ridiculous. This is fine. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a very independent woman. I've been married not even two years yet and I love my life with my husband, but most of my life has been as a single woman. And I've lived overseas by myself. I have hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. like. I am fine. I can survive a couple nights on my own without my husband. I can, and I have no problem with that. But this, these emotions were so intense and back to the puppy, like I could barely stand to be around our puppy who I love, but I couldn't stand because of the smell. And it, he needed to like go out and pee so much throughout the night and I was so tired and it's like, just there's so many things. And so I just had like, a breakdown. Um, he did go on the camping trip and everything was fine. <laughs> and now I'm like embarrassed by that story, but like, it's true that just the emotions are so intense and you know, you just kind of got to accept it that this is your life now. <laughs> and from what I've talked to other moms, like the emotions kind of stick around. So I'm probably just going to be cursed as an emotional woman. How some women are just, just like how they naturally are. And how do you handle this? Like, tell me how to live my life. <laughs> okay, next one is the big one. The big one. The big nausea. It is literally all capitalized in my phone. The nausea. Oh my goodness. I am so jealous of like the 10% or the 5% of women that don't experience nausea in their pregnancy because I had it so bad. 
so bad. Before I knew that I had twins, I really um, thought that I was having HG or it's, I think it's called hypermesis gravidurum. And that's the really, really severe nausea where like women end up in the ER and have IVs and you know, all that. And that's, I guess, I don't want to say it's rare, but you know, it doesn't happen to tons of women, but that's really what I thought was happening to me. And then I found out it was twins. So for twins, I think it's just kind of normal, but I was sick basically 24 hours a day. It's called morning sickness, which ironically morning was kind of the only time in the day that I felt a little bit okay. Still didn't feel great, but it would just get worse and worse throughout the day. And I was throwing up tons. I mean, like a light day of throwing up was like three or four times. Heavy days were like eight to 12 times. And I got to this point around week nine and 10 where I couldn't keep anything down. Like I went a solid over 30 hours. I couldn't keep any water, any food, no nothing down. So I did end up going to an urgent care. And this was the most glorious, wonderful, urgent care situation I've ever been in. They were so wonderful. They immediately got me on an IV. They were communicating with my doctor. So they were checking that he was okay with all the things that they were doing. And the actual physician on staff that day had previously been an OB. So like he was very knowledgeable about all that. They gave me a shot of a medication and then he and my doctor talked to each other and they ended up prescribing me two different medications for nausea. One of them was actually the thing that they gave me a shot for. And oh my goodness, you guys, that changed literally everything for me. I am so thankful for that medication because I could live again. Like literally I could finally eat. I had lost like eight pounds or something like that. And you're not supposed to really lose weight in pregnancy. If you don't know, you're supposed to gain weight. So it was, it had just been so bad. But these medications really, really helped. So I know medication and pregnancy can be a scary thing and some people are really against it and I, I res respect that. But I also would say from my personal experience, it allowed me to live and grow my babies because I couldn't keep anything down. And I also have a doctor that I really, really trust. And so the fact that he felt comfortable prescribing me these medications, I felt good about them. I'm still taking them. I don't take them as often. Sometimes I even forget to take them, but I have noticed if I forget to take it, I still do get a little nauseous. So even in my second trimester, I'm still having nausea, but my gosh, it was so much better. I'm able to be up. Like the fact that I'm up and dressed and in makeup <laughs> on my day off, like it's amazing. So nausea has definitely gotten much, much better. Next up, this one will be really short, um, but it's also a pretty common one and that's gas pains. Same with kind of cramping. It makes sense why you would experience gas pains with all the different things like moving and stretching and stuff like that. Um, but gas pains are still no fun. I really only had gas pains for about one week of my entire pregnancy so far. I keep expecting that it's gonna come back at some point, but it really hasn't. But for that one week, it was really unpleasant and very painful. And I took things like gas X, but I feel like it did nothing. Um, I just kind of had to wait, wait it out. Um, so yeah, if I feel like most women probably are going to experience gas pains, but hopefully for your sake, it'll be kind of my experience and it goes away. Literally, it was like week 11 and like I had it every single day and it was really painful, but then it went away and I haven't really ever had it back. So fingers crossed that the gas pains are over, but it's a manageable symptom. It's not fun, but you can continue to live your life for the most part, I think, with gas pains. And the last one, this one might be a little bit TMI, so sorry. And I'm not gonna talk deeply about this one in this video because actually this one has affected me much more severely in my second trimester. So spoilers, in my second trimester video, I'm gonna talk a lot about this, but that is constipation. <laughs> you guys, it's so horrible. Ah! It's so bad. And again, not to be too TMI, you're just getting to know me. Um, 
my, it's a genetic thing. My family already has some digestive and, you know, colon kind of issues. Um, very glamorous. So when I found out that constipation was a very common pregnancy symptom, I already guessed that I was probably going to have it pretty bad. And then once I found out I was having twins, one of the additional supplements that my doctor has me taking is additional iron. Well, iron also is bad for constipation issues. And so I'm pregnant, I already have those issues, and now I'm taking an extra iron supplement on top of the prenatal that already has iron. So I knew it was gonna be bad, but actually this one didn't hit me until about week 11 or maybe even week 12. Like it was late. I actually got through most of my first trimester thinking like, wow, I, I'm just not gonna have constipation. Wow, this is great. No, girl, you won't have it. It is bad. It is like, whew. and it has to do with, um, I believe it's progesterone is the hormone that's pumping through your body. Well, one of the hormones that is a muscle relaxant and your body needs this, especially if it's your first trimester or if it's your first pregnancy, because like your abs and your pelvis and all, all those muscles in there are really tight before you get pregnant and they have to be able to loosen so that you could stretch and hold new babies and things like that. So it makes sense that your muscles need to be able to relax. But the, the downside of that is that also takes place in your bowels and in your colon, which is good in one way because you're eating food that has nutrients that your babies need. You're taking vitamins and supplements that your babies need. So the fact that your bowels are moving so slowly, it allows your body to then get like literally all the nutrients out of all that food or vitamins before you pass it, which is good, but it also can cause your bowels to become impacted. And if you don't know what that is, let me just paint a picture for you. Um, it's like trying to uh, um, uh, push out a baked potato. It is very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. <sighs> so anyway, that started for me around week 11 or 12 um, and has carried on through, through the second trimester. I would love to get to know some other mamas or anyone who's watching these videos build a community because this is all new and kind of scary for me. <laughs> so I would love to just kind of get to know some of you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for next week. I'm going to have a part two of my first trimester and then subsequent videos are in the pipeline and I'm very excited. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.